The power of speech is immeasurable. And when I say the power of speech, I want to be very clear that I'm not talking about words only, because speech is so much more than just the words that we say. It's how we say it. And in fact, there's a person that in the 60s had a study of communications and did an experiment where he measured people's responses to how people said different words. And Meribian was the person who did the research. He's probably the most cited. When people say that only 7% of communication is through the actual words, that's the research that they're referring to if they know it or not. The interesting thing that the other 93% breaks down to 38% of it is your delivery, your tone. So how loud, your vocal variety, the different things that we focus on Toastmasters. And then 55% of it's your body language. So when you're using your hand gestures, when you're catching eye contact, those things really matter. That's how you connect. That's the power of speech. So if we look at the power of speech, I want to give three of my favorite examples of speeches that are historic and probably have shaped many of our lives in ways that we can probably not even imagine. The first one was given in 1863 by one of my favorite presidents, President Lincoln. And President Lincoln gave perhaps one of the most famous presidential speeches ever called the Gettysburg Address. And some of you may not realize this, but that speech was only 265 words long and it was delivered under three minutes, but yet it's still cited today in Congress and Senate and judges and juries, instructions. The simple concept of we're all created equal and that these are principles that we're willing to die for was such a powerful delivery that today we still think about that speech as being one of the top speeches ever given. The second speech I'd like to reference was given a hundred years later, uh, just coincidentally, and it was happened to be delivered near the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And so this was in 1963, and this was Martin Luther King Jr. with the I Have a Dream speech. And another speech that really fundamentally changed the civil rights movement. It was really viewed as a, probably one of the most powerful, powerful speeches ever given really lend a change to the way the United States and perhaps even the world look at civil rights and the way that we treat people and how there's equality. And it's interesting that he was delivered that speech in Washington, steps away from the Lincoln Memorial, a hundred years after the Gettysburg Address, which in some ways really Gettysburg Address could be viewed as the start of the civil rights because people were dying so that other people could have the rights of other people. The third and final speech that I'll give as an example of a powerful speech is the speech that President Reagan gave in 1987 at the Berlin Wall. And those famous, famous words that he spoke, Mr. Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And a lot of people, for right or for wrong, whether you disagree with his politics or not, viewed President Reagan in that speech as really being a catalyst for warming and thawing the Cold War, which for some of us, we remember that was a big deal growing up. I'm not quite old enough to remember where in schools you had to hide under desks because you were worried about what would happen if bombs were going to be lobbed, and I'm not sure hiding under a desk would necessarily save your life. But it really changed the outlook of world politics in a way that's hard to really get your arms around unless you can remember what it was like in the 80s in the Cold War. Lots of movies about nuclear war, what World War III might look like what the aftermath might look of that. But some of us are saying to ourselves, well, I'm not running to be president. I'm not worried about world leaders per se. But the power of speech applies to each and every one of you. And I suspect that's why a lot of you are here as Toastmasters, not necessarily tonight for the contest, but here because you want to harness the power of speech. For me personally, I can remember one instance, and there's several instances in my career, where my interest in public speaking and practicing and becoming a proficient speaker has really propelled my career forward. I used to be a systems engineer, which is very technical. We developed software requirements that ran the phone system. And because I liked public speaking and I liked presenting, I was often asked by the sales organization as one of the techies to come talk to the customers and explain to them what this complex software did remember my boss's boss after one customer presentation because he was an executive director and he was in all the customer meetings but he ran the whole systems engineering group so his 
focus of the world with systems engineering, said to me, you know, if you keep giving these customer presentations, it's going to hurt your systems engineering career. And he was <laughs> right. He was right. A couple weeks later, I got promoted to a sales engineer and got to travel all over the world. And I really attribute that in part, large part, in fact, because of the power of speech and how that really influenced my career. So you don't have to be a world leader to harness the power of speech. What you do is have to recognize that it's passion how you deliver the speech. It's connecting with people on an emotional level. It's inciting a feeling. It's inspiring people to do something. That's what a leader is. That's what a public speaker is that can harness the power of speech. And when you manage the power of speech, there's really no end to the possibilities that you can achieve. 